Top Secret Psi Operative Training Mission Reading Passage Energy Flow in a System Mission Understand how energy flows within a system and the difference between heat and temperature. Tips Remember to beam as you read through the passage below. Anybody order a crayfish boil? Aki, what happened? My armor was getting way too hot in the field, so I had to jump into a nearby stream to cool off. Well, maybe if you didn't get hit by the hive's laser blast so much, you wouldn't be so hot. I can't help it. They always seem to sneak up on me. I'm just lucky I haven't melted into a pile of primordial goop yet. Ha! Huh. Gross! Have you tried upgrading your armor with different metals in the lab yet to diffuse some of that incoming heat? I'm wearing the most heat-resistant metal my wallet can handle, but that's not enough. I'm going to have to start carrying around a bucket of water to pour on myself just to stay cool. Well, that would be hilarious to see. A bucket might not be necessary. Let's go talk to our STEM expert, Mr. Pauling, and see if he has any better ideas. Hey there, Nicole and Ak- Aki? You look like a drowned rat. What happened? If I said I got into an epic showdown with a shark and almost won, would you believe me? It'd be impressive if true. Unfortunately, the truth isn't so heroic. His armor got too hot from the hive's laser blasts, and he had to jump into a river to cool off. We were hoping you could help us improve the armor's cooling capabilities. Well, Mr. Not-So-Cool Aki, I think I have just the thing to help you. I've been developing a cool fan technology that will increase the volume of air that flows across your armor. This upgrade would quickly dissipate the heat energy that has been stored in the metal from all those laser blasts. How will reducing the heat energy stored in my armor help? I need it to be less hot, not have less energy. Well, before I can tell you that, we need to talk about thermodynamics. Thermo what now? Thermodynamics is the study of heat energy, thermo, and its transformations, dynamics. What we call heat is actually a form of energy that flows from areas of higher temperature to areas of lower temperature. What you perceive as hot simply has more heat energy stored in it than your body. That means that it will transfer heat energy to your body when you touch it. Oppositely, what you perceive as cold has less heat energy stored in it than your body. That means it will absorb heat energy from your body when you touch it. So, hot and cold are merely descriptions of how we feel heat energy? Right. So, when I feel hot, that means that my body is absorbing the extra heat energy that the laser has given to my armor? Right. Also, hot and cold aren't actually scientific terms. What? But don't we use scientific instruments like thermometers to determine how hot and cold things are? In science, heat is always measured in terms of energy units, like joules, simple capital J, or calories, cal. In this way, we can measure how much energy is moving between the objects that have temperature differences. In your case, Aki, from the armor to your body. A thermometer would tell us how hot or cold something is. Is that the same as measuring how much energy something has? Not quite. Like we mentioned earlier, hot and cold are based on your perception. Depending on the person, 70 degrees outside might feel hot to some or too cold to others. A thermometer is not directly measuring heat energy. Thermometers measure temperature. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in an object. This means the more that the particles within an object are moving, the higher the temperature will be. In some countries, Fahrenheit, capital F, is used to measure temperature, 
but most of the world uses the metric system that measures temperature in Celsius, capital C. Shown here is the freezing point and boiling point for water on each of the three temperature scales. Why not just use one system? That seems confusing. That is a debate that outdates you and me. And the short answer is precedent. But that's a topic for another day. Scientists prefer to use the Kelvin temperature scale in the lab because it is based on particle movement. Zero degrees Kelvin is called absolute zero because there would be absolutely no particle movement at that temperature. Absolute zero? Is that what it's like on Pluto or something? Not quite. Even in outer space, it is still about 2.7 Kelvin. We haven't actually achieved absolute zero in the lab or in real life yet, but maybe one day. The coldest temperature ever recorded was in a lab where they achieved the bone-chilling temperature of 38 trillionths of a degree above absolute zero. Absolute zero sounds absolutely fascinating. But I have a question about something we talked about earlier. If we measure temperature with a thermometer, then how do we measure heat? Well, to measure the heat energy in a substance, we have to first look at something called heat capacity. This describes how much heat must be added to an object or substance to raise its temperature by one degree Celsius. Since temperature is based on the average particle movement, and larger objects have more particles, more energy has to be absorbed by larger objects to increase their temperature by one degree Celsius. Adding the same amount of heat energy to different masses of Aki's gold armor will raise its temperature to different amounts. As you can see, the larger object has a greater heat capacity. That makes sense. So water will always boil at 100 degrees Celsius, but it will take more energy to raise a bigger pot of water 1 degree than a smaller pot of water? Indeed. Objects of different sizes at the same temperature do not have the same amount of heat energy stored in them. So in order to measure heat, you still have to consider the object's temperature, but you also need to know the mass and type of substance you have. Does that mean I could stay cooler if I just made my armor thicker because then it would take more energy to heat it up? Yes, it does. But wait, wouldn't the thicker armor eventually reach the same higher temperature? Aki can't seem to stay in cover. I have a need for speed, Nicole. You're absolutely right, Nicole. Let's think about this more scientifically. Everything that we are talking about is part of the kinetic molecular theory of heat. This theory states that particles are in constant motion, and that the temperature of an object is determined by the average kinetic energy of its particles. When heat flows into an object, the kinetic energy of its particles will increase. All particles are in constant motion? How can that be? I thought the solid's whole spiel was that they didn't move. You're only half right. All atoms are in motion, even in solids. Solids keep their shape because their particles are very attracted to each other and can't move out of place easily. It will take lots of energy to make them move out of place. In liquids, however, the particles are less attracted to each other and they can move and flow easily. In gases, the particles are even less attracted to each other and they can move around very easily. Oh, I see. What I'm not quite understanding is how this relates to my problem of getting too hot. Well, by adding energy to your armor, the particle motion increases, and as a result, it heats up. When scientists are studying heat transfer, they break down the problem into two parts. First, they identify the system, which is the object of the scientist's interest. Everything else around that system is called the surroundings. There is often a boundary separating the system from its surroundings, and that can be something physical, like a beaker, or it can be something like the air around it. Air can actually be both the boundary and part of the surroundings. 
I still don't understand how this is going to help me cool off. Well, if we consider your situation, your armor is the system because it is the object we are observing. The air around the armor and your body are both part of the surroundings. When your armor is hit by a laser blast from the hive, it heats up because the laser energy is absorbed by your armor making the atoms move faster. When energy is absorbed by the system from its surroundings, it's called an endothermic process. You are sweating because the system, your armor, is now giving off or transferring heat into its surroundings, which includes your body. When energy is released from the system into its surroundings, it's called an exothermic process. Heat energy is continuously exchanged as long as there is an imbalance of heat energy between the system and the surroundings, or until equilibrium is reached. Oh, like how when you pull your warm clothes out of the dryer, it doesn't last very long because the clothes are now in surroundings with a lower temperature, and they transfer heat until they balance out and are the same temperature. Exactly, Nicole. In Aki's case, his armor's temperature won't balance with its surroundings and will continually heat up if he keeps getting blasted with the hive's lasers. I might recommend hiding behind something when they are shooting at you, Aki. This armor has not reached thermal equilibrium with its surroundings. Okay, maybe I should practice hiding behind cover more often. But surprise attacks could totally still happen. More protection could only be a good thing. If I wore thicker armor for a greater heat capacity, wouldn't it also be heavier and therefore harder to run with? There has to be a better solution. I agree. My new lightweight cool fan technology should help you get cool fast, Aki. It greatly increases the volume of air particles moving around the surface of your armor, helping your armor to achieve thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium is where the temperature of the system and its surroundings are equal and energy transfer stops. Essentially, my fan increases the volume of cold air, low kinetic energy particles, flowing past the hot armor, increased kinetic energy particles, thus transferring the heat energy from your armor to the air and lowering its temperature. This will halt the flow of heat energy from your armor into your body, since it eliminates the imbalance of heat energy between your body and the armor. This armor has reached thermal equilibrium with its surroundings. That sounds like exactly what I need. When can we install it? Now, if you'd like. Let's go see if we can make you cooler. Cooler than I already am, you mean. Make connections. In each box below, Write a connection between the text that you just read, and either your prior knowledge or something in your life. Reading Comprehension Questions Thermodynamics 1. What does thermodynamics describe? 2. Compare and contrast Heat and temperature. 3. Why do scientists measure temperature using the Kelvin scale instead of using the Celsius or Fahrenheit scales? 4. A. What two factors affect an object's heat capacity? B. Which object holds more heat, assuming that they are made of the same material? Explain. 5. A. What does the kinetic theory of matter state about particle motion? B. How does particle motion relate to an object's temperature? 6. Identify the system in each of the following diagrams. Additionally, 
identify the process as either being exothermic or endothermic. Figure 1 Figure 2 Figure 3 7. What happens in a system where thermal equilibrium has been reached? 8. Explain why Mr. Pauling's cool fan technology is a better solution to keep Aki cool versus just using a thicker armor. Mission Debrief I'm not going to have time to get Zia caught up on our conversation about energy flow and thermodynamics. Can you please write up a PSYOPs debriefing report for her about our conversation? We need her prepared for the next hive attack. Thanks. P.S. Be thorough. We don't want Zia missing out on anything. PSYOPs debriefing report requirements Four or more on-topic sentences that summarize the reading. No less than three vocabulary words from the reading used in your report. One additional sentence about something new that you learned from the reading.